What's good everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I've made an editing tutorial, but this year I told myself I wanted to focus so much more on bringing you guys value and information. In this video, uh, I'm gonna be covering my editing workflow for my Instagram Reels, which I make, which includes export settings and my transitions. And since short form content is trending uh, in the industry right now, Everyone wants, everyone needs it, every business now needs it, and it's probably the easiest way to uh, gain organic traffic. Let's hop into my After Effects timeline. I'm gonna be doing a After Effects tutorial, but I'm also gonna be covering the Premiere Pro alternative and the CapCut alternative for you mobile creators out there. All right, so here we are in my After Effects timeline. I'm using a 2017 version. Haven't actually bothered to update it to the latest version, but this is still gonna to apply to newer, newer versions. Uh, I've chosen the uh, sound which I want to use. Um, I What I tend to do is when I'm scrolling through Instagram and TikTok, uh, I'll save uh, sounds I really like and then I'll download them later for personal use. The sound we're gonna be working with right now is this. Baby, I like your stuff. Nice, the first thing I'll do is I'll go into waveform and I'll mark out the beat. <laughs> Next thing I'll do is I'll hit the is I'll hit an asterisk on the beat itself. Nice, so we've got one, two, three, four, we've got six uh, beats to work with. After marking out uh, the beat to the audio, you also wanna make sure your composition setting is set to 1080 by 1920, aka portrait uh, orientation. Now, I tend to use uh, frame rates between 25 and 30. It doesn't really matter. You can go with that 60 FPS um, smoothness, but often a lot of the time it doesn't look natural. It might actually take away from the video itself. So I tend to just um, stick with 30 FPS. I've also um, dragged in my content I want to be using. Bearing in mind, this is a combination of drone content and mobile content. I'm gonna be showing you how you can use either or, and it's really not even about the quality of the footage. It's just ensuring um, you get that flow with the song. Next thing you wanna do, guys, is you wanna select the clips you wanna be using. These are clips uh, I just got every, uh, you know, in everyday life, and, uh, including some uh, drone clips, which I've uh, shot. Uh, what you want to do, for example, is you're going to want to select the portion of the clip uh, of the video that you want to actually include. All right, to me, this is quite an interesting uh, motion of the drone. We're just getting that um, coverage of this building here. So to me, this looks really cool. I'm going to drag this into my timeline. All right, so now we've got the video in the timeline itself. What we're going to do is we're just going to hit S and we're going to bring this scale down just so we can uh, capture as much of the video in the uh, 1080 by 1920 aspect ratio. We're going to press pre-compose on the video itself and we're going to do move all attributes into the new composition and we're going to check adjust composition duration to the time span of the selected layers. After doing that, we're going to press control alt T. All right. So right now this is how long the video is. Um, so this, these two keyframes marks the uh, starting keyframe and the ending keyframe. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to bring that ending keyframe forward and we're going to bring that ending keyframe to match the duration between the song beat. So right now we're here. And then we're just gonna trim off the end of that video because that we don't need that anymore. All right, so this is what we've got so far and it looks all right. It doesn't look too bad, but just to add some flow to the video and to really differentiate your videos, you're gonna wanna try and add some more dynamic to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these two keyframes and we're going to press F9. F9 is going to basically easy ease the keyframes, but th but that's actually the opposite of what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring that um, starting keyframe, the uh, velocity, the graph editor, we're going to bring this up here and we're going to bring the ending keyframe down. And what this is going to do is, is it's going to start the clips very quickly and it's going to slow down and then it's gonna speed up again. And so this is what it's gonna look like. I 
just editing this, all right, guys, you're going to come into a lot of complications and problems. Just looking at this, I'm not happy with how much the drone is moving. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the clip we're working with uh, longer. So we're going to uh, do the duration to, we're going to set the duration to double to 10 seconds. And as you can see, we're, we're now working with a much longer clip. Now that I'm happier with because it's almost like it's zooming in to the building itself. All right, so you want to apply this this same process to the rest of your clips. The important bit to highlight here is the way the clips are um, being manipulated is that they're starting off quick, then they're ending quick into another quick, and then ending quick again. After... All right, guys, so after adding this clip here, um, I just want to accentuate more of the motion. As you can see, the drone isn't actually capturing any, well, it's not actually moving at all. What we can do is we can actually add some uh, superficial movement. So I, what I've done is I've gone back into the composition. Uh, this is the original clip and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by pressing P. This is my uh, position keyframe. I'm going to keyframe position and I'm going to keyframe scale by hitting S as well. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start with the position a bit more centered. And we're going to end a bit more this way. So what, what I've done is I've just added some more motion just by going from left to right. I'm also going to position the scale uh, by going in and potentially going out. Then I can go back into my original composition and this is what it's going to do for us. Uh, bearing in mind uh, the time remap, the speed, velocity graph uh, which I've done here, is now also going to be manip manipulating the position on the scale keyframes. I'm liking that so far. You've actually, what you can find, is you've actually got a bit of a dolly zoom here. Um, I'm not sure if you know what a dolly zoom is. A dolly zoom is basically when the scale is increasing and the object is panning away. So that's actually a really cool effect. Liking that so far. Let's continue. All right, after finishing the sequence, uh, what I'll usually do is I will now um, save it and I'm going to have to drag it into Premiere Pro. Uh, I know this is a tiny bit tedious, but it has to be done just because I don't have a DB Media Encoder installed. We're just going to find that After Effects composition and we're going to uh, drag it into uh, Premiere Pro. Just dragged it in here, guys, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for the dynamic link to find the composition I want to use. Found it. I think it's the top one. This is why you name your compositions, guys, because it can sometimes get quite difficult to manage. All right, we're going to drag this into here, and we're going to just going to select part of the sequence I want to use. Bosch. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to add a LUT pack by using the um, effect called Lumetry, Lumetry, Lemet, oh, mate, I don't know how to pronounce it, but we're going to go to creative and we're going to go to find the one called Purity, Mavic 2 Pro, but what we're going to do is we're going to make it tiny bit higher exposure just because it's a tiny bit uh, too dark here so we're just gonna go to 0 0.1 lovely all right then we're gonna do press i on our keyboard press o on our keyboard to find the end point and we're gonna go to file hit export media uh and we're gonna call it transition to sorry time remap Transition tutorial. Lovely. I know this is where my export settings come in, guys. 
um, for those of you asking for my uh, export settings, we're going to match source, make sure it's 1080 by 1920, the frame rate is at 30 FPS. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to go to make sure it's we tick uh, render at maximum depth. This is basically color depth, I believe. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure it's VBR, variable bitrate, and it's two pass. Two pass meaning what it's going to do is it's going to render and then it's going to revise the render almost. You polish it up, make it even nicer. Um, if you want to save time, just feel free to go with VBR1. Uh, I have a target bitrate of 30 actually. Uh, just because I know it's gonna take longer, but if you have the time and you want to uh, maximize quality, then why not? And we're gonna want to make sure use me uh, use maximum render quality is also selected. Uh, with time interpolation, we don't need to bother with that. Uh, that was the After Effects. After Effects is basically gonna handle that for us uh, with the Twix that I've used earlier, but. I believe we're happy with that. We're going to make sure we've used H.264, H.265. I mean, if you want to be cool, I mean, by all means. Uh, and that's pretty much what I use. Um, yeah, let's press export.